it did. The court is now in session. Today, the chamber continues to hear the remainder testimony of the uh, witness. Then we will start hearing the testimony of a civil party that is through TCCP 255. And Mr. Yesu Huang, please report the attendance of the parties and other individuals at today's proceedings. Mr. President, for today's proceedings, all parties to this case are present. Mr. Nunji is present in the holding cell downstairs. He, he has waived, he has requested to waive his rights to be present in the courtroom. His waiver has been delivered to the Agrafie. The witness who is to conclude her testimony today, that is Madame Lai Hu, is present and ready in the uh, courtroom. We also have a reserve civil uh, party today, that is to TCCP 255. Thank you, Mr. President. President, uh, thank you. The chamber now decides on the request by Nun Chi. The chamber has received a waiver from Nun Chi, dated 26 May 2015, which notes that due to his health, that is headache, back pain, he cannot sit or concentrate for long, and in order to effectively participate in the future hearings, he requires to have his direct present at the 26 May 2015 hearing. He advises that he has been advised by his counsel that this waiver by no means can be construed as the waiver of his rights to be tried fairly or to challenge evidence presented or admitted at any time during this trial. Having seen the medical report of Nun Chi by the duty doctor for the accused at the ECCC dated 26 May 2015, who notes that Nun Chi has a chronic back pain and dizziness and cannot sit for long. And he recommends that the chamber shall grant him his request so that Nun Chi can follow the proceedings remotely based on the above info information and pursuant to Rule 815 for the ECCC internal rules. The chamber grants Nun Chi his request to follow the proceeding remotely from a room downstairs right or zero visual means. The AV unit personnel are instructed to link the proceedings to the room downstairs so that Nun Chi can follow the uh, proceeding remotely. That applies for the whole day. The chamber now hands the floor to the co-prosecutors to continue putting questions to the witness. You may proceed. Merci, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. Good morning, parties. And good morning, Madam Witness. Yesterday, when we broke up, I was asking some questions regarding the freedoms you enjoyed. And you said that freedoms and liberties were rather absent. To conclude our examination in that line of questioning, could people choose to get married without the authorization of ANCA and the immediate chiefs? No. Only when it was arranged by Anka did it happen. I was arranged to marry my husband by Anka amongst the 25 couples at the time. Très 
bien, ce sera d'ailleurs... Est-ce qu'au barrage du 1er janvier, at the first January dam work site, were you respected as human beings at the dam work site? I was a best person. However, we were considered uh, normal in a, a normal, ordinary way for people. Pour autant, As such, did you enjoy any rights or freedoms compared to nowadays? Did you enjoy any rights and freedoms as base people? We couldn't go anywhere freely. We were instructed to constantly engage in the, our work. Avant de revenir au mariage, uh, Before we go back to marriages and the organization of marriages, would you leave, Mr. President? I would like to show the witness two photographs and also have them on the screen. That is document E3 slash 3282 and E3 slash 3283. Mr. President, can I show the witness this, these photographs? President, yes, you can hand the documents to the witness. Alors, je crois que ça va être affiché dans un instant. I believe those photographs will be placed on the screen shortly. May I request you, witness, to look at those photographs carefully and tell us whether what you see on them uh, remind you of uh, the setting of the um, 1st January dam. I cannot recall uh, it well. However, there were many people at the first January Dam construction site as uh, similar to the one you see in this photo. Est-ce que vous avez jamais entendu ou Did you ever see a delegation of women from Laos visit the first January dam work site, bearing in mind that uh, the dam work site was very broad, covers a very wide surface area, so it is possible that you did not see them. Yes, I saw them usually when uh, there was a delegation's visit. We were instructed to line up along the embankment of the dam to, to greet them. Sur ces deux photos, il y a On both photographs, there is a woman wearing a white dress and she's also wearing eyeglasses. I have put a blue spotlight on that person on both photographs. Were you told who that person was at the time? No, 
I do not know about that. Très bien. J'ai également euh, deux. Very well. I also have two extracts of documents that were produced at the time. I would like to place them on the screen as well. And it's a video E3 slash 3089R between zero seconds and two minutes six. Mr. President, would you allow us to place these documents on the screen? With me, President uh, Council Copper, do you have the floor? Uh, good morning. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I have no objection. Um, I've seen the footage. Um, and I've seen the other photos just shown. Um, maybe it's um, for whatever reason, but I wasn't able to establish that these excerpts were in fact related to uh, the 1st January dam. It is obviously related to a dam, uh, but I would like to hear from the prosecution why uh, the excerpts that we are going to be seeing now are in fact excerpts from the 1st January dam. Eh bien, juste. Very well. That is precisely why we are here. We want to see whether these photographs would enable the witness to rep remember a number of infrastructures on that work site. It is possible that it is the first January dam, and it is also possible that it is another dam, and the witness should be able to enlighten us on that matter. President, the chamber will allow it. Merci. Donc je vais attendre. Thank you. So I will wait for the, pro photo, uh, for the video footage to be placed on the screen. Let us allow a few seconds before that happens. Madam Witness, before the film is screened, I would request you to look at the video footage very carefully and tell us whether you recognize any of the features on that uh, video footage. Voilà, um. There we are. I have several questions to ask on the video footage. First of all, 
do you recognize the infrastructure as those of the first January or sixth January dams? There are many features. We have the, a major infrastructure we see at the end with people standing on it. The dam I saw in the film is the first uh, January dam. And the main features that I recognize is the main spillway. And that's how I recall it. At the end of the video footage, we have that crowd that gathered around the principal reservoir or the pond. Does that remind you of any particular event you witnessed while you were working there? Yeah, Important uh, people came to inaugurate the event of opening the spillway. And people were started to go and greet them, including myself. Hier, vous nous avez parlé du moment où Yesterday, you told us of the time when Chinese leaders came to visit that first January dam. Did that person came during the inauguration of that dam or on another occasion? Yeah, Sometimes uh, they came to revisit the dams, and at other times they also came during the inauguration of the dam. Bien. Et dernière question. Very well. And this is the last question on the video footage. At the beginning of the video footage, we see a hill with, with uh, some different layers of land cut in the form of a terrace. Were there people who had to measure the terraces that had to be cut uh, for people to transport the earth? elsewhere. In fact, the measurement was done by the unit chief. Est-ce qu'il mesurait cela avec Did they use measuring instruments, cords or some other materials for that? Yes, they did. They have a measurement tape, then they would measure uh, one square a meter for each uh, worker. Bien, j'ai un deuxième. Very well. I have a, another video footage, which is shorter, in E3 slash 3014 R. One four hour, and the time is between zero seconds and thirty four seconds, and between two minutes and six seconds, and two minutes and twenty three seconds. To facilitate the viewing, we have split the time, and we now have only one video clip. Can I? Have it placed on the screen, Mr. President? President, yes, you can play the uh, footage.
Um, uh, Mr. President, observation. Um, I watched both clips as well. And I'm fairly sure that in one of the two clips, there was also audio. Uh, you can hear a uh, Khmer voice speaking. Um, I was waiting for the second clip to be played because I wasn't sure which one of the two. Uh, but I think it would be helpful if uh, we would also hear the audio footage the audio uh, sound. Indeed, I believe one of the two videos features a commentator who was speaking. I think it was the second, and the first is 25 minutes long, and it is only in the second half of the video that we have comments. I don't know whether I could have done any better. I do not think the comments give any added value to the exercise. There were propaganda com comments, and I think it was in the second video that we have those comments. I, I don't know what it says. Uh, so I, I think it would be beneficial to all parties if we were able to hear at least the sound of that woman uh, saying things. Council, if you consider it uh, relevant, you can play it in the time assigned to you. There is no objection to that. Indeed, I would like to ask a couple of questions. Regarding that video footage, Madam Witness, were you able to recognize familiar locations or perhaps even some people in that uh, video footage. Uh, does that film uh, show pictures of the first January Dam construction works or this sixth January Dam construction works or you are not aware of that? The footage shows the first uh, January Dam. As you can see, there were many workers, and the depth of the uh, dam uh, was actually deep, and they had to carry us from afar. And as for the sixth January dam, actually it was shallower than the first uh, January dam. Can you explain to us why people were running? In that video, at a point in time, people were running with the earth that they had to transport. Why was that? When there were visitors, we were told to walk running so that the visitors would see us uh, proactive in uh, doing our work. I would like to look at the last subject with you. That is the subject of arranged marriages. As a follow-up to what you said a while ago, and we're using D166-38, The French EIN is 00283910, and in English it is 00244165. This is what you stated. At the time of the Khmer Rouge, customary marriages were forbidden. They would choose a name and ask whether the person named agree to get married or not. As for the new people, the couples were imposed. 
after 1979, those who were not happy about those marriages divorced. I got married in 1978 when 25 couples were married. After my marriage, I was ordered to live in the cooperative. In the day, we worked separately, but at night we were allowed to live together. Now, in this extract, it appears that there is a distinction made between marriages between base people and new people. Let me first start with the marriages between base people. As far as you were concerned, that is you and your husband, who took the initiative to have you married? Was it you yourselves or your chiefs who chose your partners? I was a best person, and so was my husband, and uh, the mother of my husband and my mother mutually agreed to have us married, and it was Anka who arranged our marriage. And during the previous regime, in fact, uh, our parents tried to match us, but uh, they could not. And I was asked uh, by other men to, to marry, but I refused. And later on, it was Anka who arranged our marriage. Concerning the 24 Regarding the 24 other couples who were with you during this the ceremony when you made a commitment, who took the decision? Who made that choice? Was it the same person who made that decision or some other person? New people would be met without going through a proposal made to the parents they would select some female to, to get married with some men. It's good. In your unit, um, were there women who got married at the same time as you, base women? There was another woman named Ri. She got married when I was married. Later on, she got divorced, and only I remained uh, in a marriage. And as for the new people, I didn't know what happened to them after 1979. And your colleague who got divorced, did, had she chosen her husband, or someone had chosen her husband for her? And so she was paired up. And did she have the opportunity of uh, refusing this marriage? And so I have no idea. And now uh, she got divorced. You spoke about the new people, and you said that uh, couples were imposed. And do you know if the biographies of the future couples uh, would be checked before they would get married? Answer. New people, their biography were not checked. And for me, as a base person, and uh, we were considered petty bourgeoisie, and if uh, the man was rich, 
we would not be paired up because we were of a different background. My husband was a former teacher in Songkum Rihniyum, and I, uh, my marriage was uh, refused at first. Later, when it was almost at the end of the regime, I was uh, paired up with my husband and um, my marriage took place. Anka then uh, arranged uh, the marriage for me and my husband. And were ba new people in allowed to, to marry base people? Answer, yes, base people can marry, can be married. And uh, 20 or 25 uh, couple would be uh, arranged for their marriage at a time. I believe that my question wasn't well understood or maybe not well translated. I was asking you if, for example, a man who was a new person who was in love with uh, a lady f who was a base person, could they marry? Could he marry her? Were these marriages between base people and new people, were they possible back then? Answer, no. If uh, they were of different backgrounds, they could not get married. Were you ever told why? Were you ever explained why this was forbidden and why the new people were separated from the base people concerning marriages? Answer, I uh, do not know about it. Now, with regard to the Cham, were the Cham forced to marry other Cham? Or could Cham people marry new people? Answer. In my place, uh, Cham uh, marries their own people, and uh, I uh, do not. See, I did not see at the time the uh, marriage for Cham people. And did they have the choice of marrying whom they wished, or was it the same situation as, the, as with the new people? They were given automatically a future groom or a future bride. Answer. Yes. Anka chose the bride or groom uh, for him or herself, but uh, Cham people could not choose uh, Khmer people to be their husband or wife. During the ceremony, did the person who presided over the ceremony say anything about uh, consummating this marriage or about the, the children uh, that uh, would be born as a result of this marriage? No, we were not told about it. And after the marriage, uh, the newly wed would go and uh, take rest by themselves. You worked for a long time at the 1 January and 6 January work sites. And do you know if women who were working on these work sites, given the fact that they were very exhausted, would still menstruate uh, and would be able uh, to bear children? Answer. They came to work as normal, and as for those who were sick, they 
would come once or twice a month. And for those who were in good health, they would uh, come regularly. Well, I have no further questions, Mr. President. Uh, I will now give the floor uh, to uh, the uh, civil parties. President, thank you. The floor is now given to the uh, lead co lawyer for civil parties. You may now proceed. International Deputy Co Prosecutor, uh, you uh, may proceed first. I'm sorry, I forgot to thank you for having answered my questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good morning to all of you. Good morning, uh, witness. Uh, my name is Marie Guiraud. I am the international counsel representing the interests of uh, the uh, s victims and who have joined as civil parties uh, for this trial. I have a few very uh, short questions to put to you today. And I'm going to start by asking for clarification with regard to what you told us yesterday concerning the presence of soldiers uh, from Baray district. Uh, and you said yesterday that these soldiers would uh, watch over the workers at the work sites and that they were armed. Now, I wanted to know if you remember what kind of weapons these s soldiers had. Answer. I saw AK rifles. The district soldiers were armed with uh, AK rifles. Thank you. Back then, did you hear or see some of these soldiers use uh, their weapons on the work site? Answer, no. They could not fire their rifles uh, freely, but they were told to be armed with uh, AK rifles to secure the safety and security. Thank you. You also said yesterday that these soldiers would uh, watch over the work site, and I wanted to know if you were also watched over uh, in the barracks where you would sleep at night. Back then, did you see soldiers or guards uh, where you would sleep? Answer. I have never seen that. The for members of the mobile units, they would stay in their place, and the district soldiers uh, would be stay in their own units. And for workers, uh, we would be uh, awakened up at 3 a.m. when we heard the uh, visual blown. And for sick people, the cat rays would come to have a look how many people got sick and they took note to see whether these people got sick again later. Thank you. Now I wanted to know if during the period when you worked on the 1 January dam work site if you witnessed any accidents uh, on the work site. Answer, uh, yes, when I was carrying earth at the work site, the soil collapsed on the, the worker who was uh, digging soil at the bottom of the canal. It, it did not happen at my village. It was in an other units. There was soil collapse on people who were digging soil. 
and for those who were carrying us, uh, accident would not happen to them because they would lay the basket to get the soil and then carry away. I understood. Um, so did you know back then what happened to the workers you were speaking about? That is to say, the workers who were upstream from the landslide. Do you know if these people uh, survived or not? Answer. Some people died from uh, soil collapse because a uh, rock would sometimes uh, come with the soil and uh, some other uh, broke their legs. Thank you. Did you know back then if there were accidents uh, by the main spillway that you described to us a little earlier on, next to the main basin. And sir, I have never heard of any accident at the main spillway. I mean, the at the first January work site. Thank you. I have one or two last questions for you. You said to us a little earlier this morning when you were speaking about marriages that one of your colleagues in your unit had divorced after being married. So I wanted to know if the divorce occurred during the Democratic Kampuchea period, that is to say before January 1979, or if she divorced after. Answer. She had the war after the regime failed, and uh, she had the war after 1979, and she got a few uh, children already, and after that time, she had the war. Thank you. Was it possible during the regime uh, to get divorced? Did you witness uh, this happening? Answer, no. I have never seen any divorce during the regime. After the marriage was arranged by Anka, the newlywed did not dare to get divorced. Even they did not uh, cons consummate their marriage. If they uh, dared to uh, get divorced, they would be killed by Anka. Thank you. You said earlier on to the co-prosecutor that once you were married, uh, once you got married, you went to rest. So I wanted to know if at any given moment after you got married, if you were watched over so that they could know whether or not you were getting along well with your husband. Answer. After my marriage, uh, the militia came to conduct surveillance on me, and the militia would come to see whether we celebrated any uh, ritual, religious uh, ritual after our marriage, such as uh, burning the joysticks. If uh, we found uh, doing that, uh, we would be taken away and killed. And when you said that the militiamen came to watch over you, did they only come the evening 
of your marriage ceremony or were they watching you on several occasions? Can you tell us exactly how often the militiamen came to watch over you? Answer. They came to watch over me and my husband for just the first few days. And after that, they never came back. They wanted to see whether we made any offerings to our ancestors after our marriage. My last question. Did you have the impression back then that the militiamen would make sure that uh, you would consummate uh, your marriage with your husband? Perhaps so. They came to watch over whether we got along with each other and whether we consummated our marriage. Not only me were uh, watched over by militiamen, the, the militiamen would come to watch over the newlyweds. Thank you, witness, for having answered my questions. I am done, Mr. President. President, thank you. Now the floor is given to the defense teams. First, I give the chamber gives the floor to the defense counsel for Mr. Nguyen Chia to put their questions to this witness. You may now proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, good morning, Madam Witness. Um, I would like to start with asking you a few questions um, about some people that you might have known at the time. Um, in your um, statement to the investigators, you spoke about uh, some other female cadres uh, from your unit. Um, you talked about uh, Nai, Lim, Ut, Ri, and Tan. Um, just now you mentioned, uh, I think, in relation to a question about marriage and somebody who got divorced, um, a name, a woman called Ri. Is that the same woman, Ri, from your unit? the one who got divorced, is that the re from your unit? Answer yes. Her name was re. She was in the same unit of mine. And uh, our house was close uh, to each other in Trust Village. Um, while I'm on the subject of um, uh, this woman uh, named Ri, you said that she was divorced after 79. Do you know which year she got divorced? Answer, I do not know when she got divorced. She went to live in Srok Le. After 1979, when the regime fell, she stopped, uh, stopped living in uh, my village. She went to live in uh, Srok Le with her husband to do the vegetation farming. Or do you know whether she was divorced in, in recent years, let's say five or ten years ago, or was she divorced in the years after the regime fell? Answer, after she had 
two or three children, she got divorced. I uh, do not know where she went to live after that time. Um, do you know the reasons why she got divorced? Answer. She got divorced be because her husband had a mistress. Of course, that I understand. Um, I would like to ask you a question about another female companion uh, from your unit, uh, a woman named uh, Ut. Um, what do you remember about this woman, Ut. Answer. I do not recall about her. She was in. She was living in different place from mine. I have never thought of her. I will read um, the answer that you gave um, to the investigators, maybe to refresh your memory. Um, that is D one six six slash three eight English zero zero two four four one six six French zero zero two eight three five one one and Khmer zero zero two three. 9932. Um, the question was asked to you, do you remember the names of anyone who worked in your special unit? You said, um, and I quote, there were 12 people in my team. I remember Nai, female, Lim, female, Ut, female, Ri, female, Mom, female, and Tan, female. Um, I have questions about Ut. Does it now ring a bell who Ut was? Answer. Ut was living in the same village of mine. Would it be possible that her full name is Kang Ut? Answer. I do not know her surname. We are living in the same village now today. Um, do you know if her husband is named Semri? Yeah. My Answer. Yes, Semri. Semri is also living in the same village. And uh, the two uh, were married by Ankad, but uh, their marriage day was different from mine. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, I'm referring to um, document D166-18. Um, Technically, I, sh I should have maybe referred to um, um, Kang Ut as TCW 855. Um, I would like to um, read a passage from her statement um, to the investigators. It's um, e English ERN 0023 and French 00268959. Um, English is the third page. Um, Madam uh, Witness, uh, your colleague Kang Ut uh, was also asked some questions, not, not very many. 
um, by the investigators, and I would like to read to you uh, one of her answers, and I would like to ask uh, whether you uh, have anything to say about what she says. Um, question. Did anyone get sick at the first January Dyke work site? Uh, good answers. Uh, a number of people got sick because they overworked and became so exhausted. Some of the diseases include fever and stomach pain. There was no hospital, but there were mobile medics. There were medicines known as rabbit droppings medicine. When someone was seriously ill, they would be sent to the faraway hospital. No one was wanted to be left dead at the site. Um, is that, in your recollection, a correct statement uh, that uh, Kang Ut gave about the medical situation? Thank you, Madam. President, please hold on, Madam Witness. You may now proceed, Minister National Deputy Co-Prosecutor. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, well, we don't really have an objection here, but we still would like to let you know that this document is not on the interface, and it might have been a bit more courteous on the part of the, def of the defense uh, to give this uh, record to everyone, including uh, to the bench before the hearing. However, we're not making a particular objection here, but I think, however, that proper practice uh, makes it necessary to communicate all documents to all parties. Uh, true. I apologize. Um, it just came up this morning, um, too late to be putting this document on the interface. Um, I nevertheless, nevertheless ask leave um, to ask this question. Um, Madam Witness, you heard this short excerpt from um, Ut's statement. Is it correct what she testified to? Yeah. Answer, yes, that is correct. It, it's true what he said. And um, she talks about a faraway hospital. Do you know which hospital it was that sick people who stayed sick at the site were sent to? It was the district hospital in Barai. It was about 10 kilometers away from the work site. Do you remember anybody from your unit who got sick, who first went to the mobile medics but stayed sick and was then sent to the district hospital? Answer, those who could not be cured at the mobile unit, they would be forwarded to the faraway hospital. And if some uh, people fell uh, sick and not seriously, they uh, would be given the uh, rabbit trappings medicine or they would be given uh, the uh, B12 or B1. I didn't hear the first few words of your answer, but do you know any concrete examples of women within your unit uh, who got sick uh, and then were sent by the medical units to the district hospital? Do you, do you remember any particular uh, female worker in your unit uh, to which this happened? Answer. I have never seen anyone got uh, serious illness in my unit and they could be cured after the treatment of uh, mobile medics. So again, in my unit, there was no one uh, got serious illness. 
Um, and my last question about uh, Uth's statement. Um, she says, uh, she said to the investigators that no one was wanted to be left dead at the site. Uh, would you agree with her? Answer, yes, I agree with it because I witnessed such an incident as well. Those people who got serious ENS, they would be referred to a faraway hospital. The medics in, at the work site got only four or five day training. After that, they were dispatched to the work site to treat people. Um. Let me rephrase my question um, to be maybe more clear to you. Um, was anybody ever left dead at the, at the first January dam site because he or she was sick? No, there was no such a case. When people were seriously ill, they would not be allowed to stay. They would be referred to another hospital since there was no adequate medical treatment at the work site. I refer to those who had a serious dysentery or who vomited. Thank you, um, Madam Witness. Um, you have testified that you yourself are from uh, Thras village in the um, Walang district. Uh, do you know a village also in Balang district called Pre Srang village? No, that name does not ring a bell. Uh, I, I only heard of a Tra, which is my village, and as for Trang village, no, it doesn't ring a bell at all. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's my mistake, but I meant a village called Pre Srang village. There is a village uh, named Pre Srangai village, which is adjacent to a Trah village. Um, I, I think um, we talk about the same village. Um, ex my apologies for my um, Khmer pronunciation. Um, do you remember who was the village chief of uh, Pre Srang village? No, I don't know that uh, village chief as it was a, another village. Does the name Ao Hao um, ring a bell? Ao Ho was a former village chief uh, quite a long time ago, and he uh, was later on replaced by another village. He was a former Praise Rongai village, or he was also known as the chief of the uh, Praise Rongai cooperative. And I know this man. Later on, uh, several more uh, village chiefs had uh, replaced him successively. I think we're talking about the same person. Uh, what else do you remember about um, Ao Hao? I do not recall any particular events as I did not work uh, with him. He was a chief of another village where I did not live in. Um, or do you remember anything in terms of um, that he was a um, 
a good village chief or that he was a particularly cruel village chief or uh, anything um, that you might recall about him would be helpful. No, I don't have anything to say about him, whether he was cruel or he was uh, gentle. As I said, I lived in a separate village from where he lives. Um, I understand. Um, you worked with your um, colleagues in um, the special mobile unit at the dam. Um, he testified before the trial chamber last week um, and said that he also worked with around 100 people from his village at the first January dam work site. Do you recall having seen him and the people from his village working at the first January dam work site? Yes, because people from all the villages were assigned to go there and a sleeping shelter was built for each village. So usually the, the sleeping quarters were just uh, adjacent to one another. And as I said, I know him, but I did not know any particular uh, personality about him. Would you be able to tell us something about the distance between um, the sleeping barracks from your unit and the sleeping place from his village? Was it very close by? Um, was it next to each other? Can you recall? In Balang commune, the ten villages who, which were assigned to work at the construction work site, were assigned to live uh, just uh, along one another in uh, a similar sleeping quarter as a row of buildings were built, and each, we, each village would accommodate their own its own workers. So, to make sure I understand, all villages from Balang had their work site and their sleeping quarters next to each other. Uh, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. We were sleeping next to one another. And in the morning, when the whistle was blown, we uh, had to wake up and cheer up. And uh, in the evening, when we returned to the sleeping quarter, we were just uh, adjacent to uh, one another. Um, Mr. President, I'm, I'm looking at the clock. There's a very specific topic that I would address, which will take a while. Um, would it be an appropriate time to take a break? President, uh, thank you, Council. It is now convenient for a short break. We take a break now and resume at 10.30. And court officer, please assist the, the witness in the room for the witnesses and civil parties and invite her as well as the uh, TPO staff back into the courtroom at 10.30. The court is now in recess. Okay.